friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Lawn Fawn How You Bean Seashell Add-on, as well as some little accessory images from You Are Sublime and Fantastic Friends. I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with the starfish and I'm going to color them using YR12, YR14, and YR18. So I'm starting with the YR18 and on this first one I added a little bit of extra shading on the left since that other shell is overlapping it and then blend it out with the YR14 and then I'm going to fill in with the YR12. For the one that I stamped singly, I'm going to do the shadows a little bit different. I'm doing them on the bottom edges of the four that are kind of pointing down and to the sides, and then just on the right hand side for the one on the top, since I'm going to have it tilted a little bit toward the right on the card. And then again, just blending out with the mid-tone and then saving some room for the highlight. And then I did let that dry and then went back in with the YR18 to add some dot detail to give it some texture and um, just make it look extra cute. And then I added a few dots with the YR14 as well. Just a couple of those here and there. I didn't fill in the entire thing, just mainly in the darkest shaded places. Then I'm going to move on to E50, E51, and E53 for my conch shell. And I'm taking that E53 and outlining each section of that shell. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E51, sticking really close to the outside edge. I'll add a little of that E50 as well. But I'm going to leave some of that white cardstock showing through for a bit of extra highlight. And then I'm going to come back to that shell in just a little bit and add some extra detail. In the meantime, I also wanted to do the two spiral shells. But this time I'm just starting with the E51 and outlining each of the sections there. And then I'll blend that out with the E50 and still leave a little sliver of white space in each of those areas. For the details, I'm going to hang on to that E53 and bring in E55, E57, and E59. On the conch shell, I'm starting with the E59 and adding some little spots, just trying to make them look kind of blobby almost, not really too circular. I want them to be a bit organic looking. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E57 and soften the edge of that with the E55. And I decided I wanted one on the underside as well. I just wanted a little one there, so I'm going to put another one down at the bottom. And then for the spiral shells, I'm going to start with the E57. And this time I'm going to do kind of more uniform little dots with that E57 and then blend those out with the E55, just dotting that right over the edge to soften it. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the full size spiral shell. So I actually like to collect tiny little things from nature whenever I go on little trips or walks or things. Um, so I have a bunch of different rocks and little pine cones and acorns and seashells all over the my windowsill in my craft room. And I actually use some of those shells as inspiration for my coloring. So there's a little tip for you guys. Or you can also just Google pictures of seashells to get some ideas of different patterns you can try. I'm gonna throw in a little YR00 and YR01 on the inner curve of the conch shell and the full size spiral shell. And then I'm going to move on to E40, E41, and E42 for these larger um, shells. I am going to start with the E42 on both edges, blend out with the E41, and then I'll bring in a little E40 
and once again I'm going to leave in some white space. And then for the other stripes, I'm going to bring in RV93, R56, and R59. And I, I often find little shells that have this kind of reddish color in them, little stripes or um, striations. So that was kind of the inspiration behind these ones. Um, but I'm taking that R59 and putting a little bit on the outer edge of each of those stripes blending toward the center with the R56 and then filling in what's left there with the RV93, which is kind of gonna dull it down and make it look a bit more natural. And then I'll use those same shades on the other striped shell, um, just using that on the thinner stripes. I didn't wanna go too dark with those reds, so that's why I opted for the thinner stripes, but I think either could be pretty. So um, I just wanted to keep it a little bit more in a neutral color tone because my background is gonna have a lot of bright color. For the Nautilus, I'm going to start with some neutral grays. I'll use N0, N1, N3, and N5. So I'm taking that N5 and just adding a very small amount of that right up against the edge of that swirl all the way around. And then I will blend that out with the N3. And I'm trying to stick really close to that line because I don't want to get too heavy handed with this. I want to have lots of room for the highlight. So once I have the N3 laid in, I'm going to add in the N1 and just catch the edge of the previous shade each time so that I get a nice smooth blend. This is a seashell, so I want it to look really nice and smooth. And then I'll fill in the rest with the N0. I'll add some dot detail around that outer edge with the N3. And then I did decide to add a few darker ones in there with the N5. And then I just went back over that with the N3 once again to soften some of those darker ones up. And then I'm going to add some extra color on here. So I'm gonna to switch to some aqua blues. I'm using BG quadruple zero, BG triple zero, and BG01. So I'm gonna do the opposite side of that spiral with that BG01 and then blend out with the BG triple zero and then add in a little BG quadruple zero and just blend that right over the gray. For the clamshell in the back, I'm actually going to start with these shades. I'm using that BG01 on the left side of each of those sections and then blending out with the lighter two shades. And then I'm gonna to switch to some warm grays just to mix it up. I'll use just W00 and W1 because I wanted to keep that pretty soft and add that on the opposite edge, so on the right of each of those sections. And then I'm going to add in a few little dot detail for that shell as well. And I also decided to go back in and add some little dots to the two striped shells, which I Forgot to do when I had those colors out, so I just went back to the E41 and E42. It's just a really quick and easy way to add a little bit of texture to those shells. So next I'm gonna move on to my plants, and I'm gonna start with G16, G19, and G29 for the wavy plants that look like kelp. I put the G29 on the outer edge and I did one on the right and one on the left just to make them look a little bit different from each other. Then blended that G29 out with the G19. It saved quite a bit of room on there for that lightest shade, the G16. So I just quickly filled those in. And then for the uh, leafy plants, which I like to call ferns. Um, I used YG03, YG05, and YG07. And for those, I just did a super quick layer of the YG03 first. And then when I'm done with that, I will just add a dot of the YG05 closest to the stem on each of those tiny leaves 
just using the very tip of that marker to get those tiny little dots in there. And then I'll do the same thing with the YG07. And I think this looks even nicer sometimes when you have more contrasting colors. These shades happen to blend really well together, so it's not as pronounced. But um, yeah, I like to mix it up with the different shades of green as well. So that's why I have some blue greens and then some more yellow greens. And then um, I'm going to add in some teal greens as well, just to have a nice variety of all those different shades. For those teal shades, I'm going to use BG72, BG75, and BG78. Just placing the BG78 where each of those leaves is bent away from the light that will be coming in from above, even though this is an underwater scene. And then I'll blend that out with the BG75 and fill in any remaining white space with the BG72. And then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I'm starting with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I'm going to blend on some Distress Oxide inks. The first shade I'm starting with is Cracked Pistachio, and I'm going to put that right in the center. I want my scene to be lighter in the center and then darker at the edges. So I'm going to darken that up next with some Lucky Clover, just bringing that in until it meets the area where I've laid in the Cracked Pistachio. And right now it's not going to look great because this is just the initial layer. I'm going to have to work back and forth to get these to blend nicely, but they will blend really nicely in the end. So once I have that, I'll go back to the Cracked Pistachio and just work over the transition between the two. And once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm going to go back to my um, Lucky Clover and add a bit more of that on, just building up those layers, making that color a bit more saturated, bringing that in further toward the center, and going back to the Cracked Pistachio once again. And then to darken up those edges even further, I'm going to bring in my third shade, which is Pine Needles. And this one I'm going to keep close to the outside edge. I don't want to have too much of that, but I do want to have a nice dark border on the edges. And I'm not going to worry too much about the bottom because that is going to get completely covered up by another panel in a minute. But I will work back down now in the reverse, going to the Lucky Clover and then the Cracked Pistachio. And then once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm going to spritz some water onto an acrylic block and tap that all over the background. Let that react with that Distress Oxide ink for a few seconds, and then I'll blot that up with a paper towel. Then I'm going to take some of the darkest shade of ink, the Pine Needles, and press that onto the block. Mix that up with the water that was left over, and then splatter that all over the background as well. So I can get some nice little variations there in that background with some lighter speckles and the darker speckles. And then I will set this panel aside to dry. I'll clean up my work surface and then switch to my second panel of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, which I trimmed down using the Stitch Hillside borders. And then I also cut in some of the Sandy Beach accents so that I would have some little slits in the background that I can slide my seashells into. So I'm going to continue coloring this with some Distress Oxide inks, starting with Antique Linen and just putting in kind of like a base layer of that. And then I'm going to darken up the edge with the Gathered Twigs, which is going to really highlight that stitching detail. I'll switch back to the Antique Linen to start to blend that out. And then I'm going to use a scrap piece of cardstock to help me highlight those little sandy beach accents by adding some darker color in there. And don't be alarmed that it kind of looks rough there. Um, it's going to all blend out because I'm working on that Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. The Distress Oxide inks blend really well over that. So I can easily just blend that back out using more of the antique linen, but I'll still be left with those darker highlights where I want them. 
and any imperfections are going to be covered by this speckle detail that I'm going to add to this panel as well. Um, I pressed some of the antique linen on there, but I remembered that I wanted to start with just some plain water, so I did that first. Just splattering that all over the background, and then I'll blot that up with the paper towel once again. And then I will splatter on some of the antique linen. And I like adding in the lighter shade because it really helps it look like sand when those speckles land in the darker inked up spaces. And then I'll add some of the gathered twigs as well. Just mixing that up and then I'll splatter that all over the background. So I get a lot of different size droplets that'll really help give it that sandy texture. And then I'll set this piece aside to dry as well. While that's drying, I'm going to switch back to my water background and I'm going to brush on some Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool up at the top because I want to heat emboss my sentiment. I'm going to stamp that down in Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that works great for embossing because it grabs a hold of your powder and I'm stamping on Let's Shellabrate, and I am stamping that down twice, and then just pushing down very gently to make sure that I don't squish that stamp down too hard. I'm gonna coat that in some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. I just keep mine in a big tub to make it easier to pour that over my panel, and then I will heat that up with my heat gun. I like to do the back first, and then bring it to the front until all of that powder is melted and bright and shiny. Then I'm gonna pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using some Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock and stamping in Peacock ink. And I'm going to do a row of seashells down the left side of my card and then the sentiment down at the bottom. And then before I assemble this card, I actually want to add a little extra detail to the background. I'm going to take some of these solid stamps from Mermaid For You, and I'm going to start with this seaweed stamp and start adding that along the sides using that pine needles ink. And I'm just making sure that the bottom runs off the edge, so it's just kind of coming in from the sides as if these seaweeds are kind of like flowing in the underwater currents and kind of bending in toward that sentiment and toward our scene that will be in the center. So I did that on the left hand side and I'm going to repeat that up the right hand side. Just adding that at varying degrees, um, some a little bit more farther in than others. And then when I'm done with that one, I'm actually going to take one of the solid coral and I'm going to stamp that one in the Lucky Clover. So both of those are in inks that I had already used on the background, but now I'm just using them uh, a bit more solid on this stamp. So it's gonna stand out really nicely, but um, still fade into that background um, and just kind of become part of the depth of the scene that you're going to see. And again, I'm going to bring that in on both the left and the right. The first one that I stamped down on the right hand side wasn't quite tall enough. It wasn't going to be above that sandy background. So I just stamped another one on top, but you'll never see that bottom one. Then I'm going to start to assemble everything. I'm going to take the ocean background and glue that to the front of my standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And then I'm going to take my seashells before I add the sand. I want to pop the little seashells into the sandy beach accents. So they're kind of nestled in there. So I'm figuring out the placement for those and then taping them into position with a little extra post-it tape. Those are just left over from trimming out the dies. And then I will add a little spot of glue behind each of those shells to make sure they stay secure where I wanted them. And then I'll add some foam tape to the back of this entire panel. Then I can peel off those release papers, line that up with the bottom of the card. 
and pop that down into place. I also added some foam tape to the back of my seashell cluster. So I'm going to pop that right at the top of the sand in the center. And then I've added foam tape to the back of three of those little fern type plants. So I'll pop three of those up and then add the other two flat to the card just to have some varying degrees of dimension there. And I'm just gluing those down using my glue tube and making sure that they don't all kind of bend exactly the same way. I'm tilting some a little bit to the left or to the right to just make them look um, like they're also just catching in those underwater currents and kind of drifting back and forth in that scene. And I felt like the ones on the left were a little bit too clustered together, so I just adjusted two of those to make them look a little bit more spread out. The rest of the plants are going to get nestled in amongst the seashells and the starfish that are down in front, and I'm just using my glue tube to adhere those flat since the sandy part that they're attached to is already popped up on foam tape and I just wanted to keep it to one level of dimension to make for easier mailing. The last little plant I'm going to tuck behind the striped seashell so that one will have two and then I'm going to bring in some clear water droplets in two different sizes and I will add some little dabs of glue to the background and then pick those up with my Studio Katia embellishment wand and just nestle those on top of the glue. And I just did a few at a time until I had a look that I liked. And I know that glue looks a little bit milky now underneath each of those little water droplets, but it will actually dry clear so you'll be able to see right through them and it'll just give you like a nice glassy look of bubbles spread throughout the water, which I think is quite nice. I also wanted to add a little bit of sparkles, so I'm gonna bring in my favorite embellishment, some Stardust Stickles. I didn't wanna to go too crazy with it though, cause I worked really hard on that coloring and I didn't wanna cover it all up. So I'm just adding it to the Starfish and then I also added a little bit to the clamshell in the back. I just put it on the blue stripes on the left of each of those little sections. Then I wanted to add some little shine marks to some of the other shells. So I just grabbed a white Sakura Jelly Roll pen and added a few little lines and dots although mine was kind of running out. So I did have to grab a new one after I was done filming. I had to go look for it and redo those lines, which you can see in the photos at the end of the video. To take my sentiment up a notch, I'm going to grab the Lawn Fawn glitter pen and just trace the space between the embossing with that and that will react with those Distress Oxide inks as well because it's wet so it'll lift a little bit of that color and make that stand out more over time. And then I also added a few extra dots into that sandy background. And that is going to finish up this card so I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of that detail and how all of that shimmer catches the light. I'll give you another peek at the inside. This video will also be on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel today, so if you'd like to see it again, you can check it out over there. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. You can leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All of the products that I used will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.